Hi everybody. Today I'm working on making over this little shadow box tabletop decor, wall decor thing. I got it for a dollar from the summer clearance at Walmart, but I know they sell something just like this at Dollar Tree. This one's just a little bit sturdier. It has a nicer hook. Um, it's not any better made though because I just ripped this thing off with my giant man hands. It does leave a little glue and probably fiberboard or particle board or whatever that is of the wood behind, but I just scraped it up and left it alone. I'm not going to give you any measurements for all this because unless you get this exact one, it doesn't matter, but I think these strips were about an inch and a half, and this is just a faux wood print. Obviously, it's faux. It's on paper. And I picked up a little chevron print for the back. I wanted to do kind of neutral fall decor and use that maple leaf from the Dollar Tree. And here's some Mod Podge mat and a dwindling supply of my chalk paint and white. This is a Folk Art Treasure Gold paint. I really like this. I, I have a lot of issues with gold paints. They, they're never what I want them to be. And usually if they are what I want them to be, they're like oil-based and very hard to clean up. And this is an acrylic. I don't know why it comes in a bottle like this instead of a actual squeeze bottle, but it's pretty good. If I was going to do this again, I would probably run a sealer of Mod Podge over this exposed end grain thing right here because it soaked up the paint. It just ate it up. I think I did about three coats. The inside part is coated with paper right there, so it's going on a little bit better, but that outer edge, it was just a mess. Not a mess, but it, it really soaked up the paint. But I like this because it's not too gold, like a neutrally gold. Neutrally gold, is that even a thing? A less warm gold, I don't like yellow golds. So now I have my Mod Podge and I am just painting it on the bottom of this tray and as always go light or go home and even though this coat is extra light I did get some weird bubbles in the bottom and I don't know why and I'm wiping off the Mod Podge that's on top of the gold just because I don't want it to dull it down So just put this piece in, pushed it down a little bit, I gave it a couple of seconds to dry off, you know, a minute or so, just because I don't like putting the Wet Mod Podge on top of the paper that's on top of Wet Mod Podge, especially with this scrapbook paper. I think I got this from Michael's. It was particularly thin, like very thin. They charge him 69 cents for a piece of paper that's this thin? Not today. But the wood grain paper I got for the side is actually really nice. It was thicker. It held up better to the Mod Podge process. And I'm starting on the side. You never want to start like at the top or in, in the spot that's going to be very visible because we're inevitably going to have seams and I'd rather them either on the side or the bottom. And both of mine end up being on the side. And there's a little variation in color here, so when I get to the seams where they overlap, you can see where one starts and one ends, but I'm not worried about it. I got to sleep last night. We fun. Yeah, so this wood on the outside went so much better than the inside did. That inside was so bubbly. I think I actually have two layers of paper down because I had to cover the first one up because it looks so bad. Just slapping another little thin layer on, covering that up and rubbing it in. I use my hands a lot with Mod Podge. I think it's just like a tactile thing, like I want to just touch everything. And at the corners right there, you can kind of see, I'm creasing it so I have a nice sharp corner.
these are the rushes from Dollar General. I swear, every time I go, it's like, let me grab another pack. They're just gold Tokelon brushes, but I really like them. I think it's because there's a nice variety in the pack. So again, just creasing that a little bit and gluing that down. You don't have to extend it as far as I did, but the edge of the paper was a straighter edge than I could have cut. And now that all that's done, I'm going to seal that edge and then go back and give everything a coat just to lock it in. And the paper's a tiny, tiny bit too big. And I push, I made it level with the front of the box. And there's a little extra on the back of the box. And I just push that down with my finger. This is a leaf shape from Dollar Tree. I think there's five in a pack for a dollar. I believe that this is one of the ones that's two of them glued together. I do two in this video because I had a mishap, which it's terrible, but we'll get to that. All I'm doing right now is drawing on just some suggestions of where the veins would be. And yes, you are seeing things correctly. I have busted out the fabric puffy paint. This is like 97 cents at Walmart, and I use this really only for this technique, and one of them will last me for, uh, I don't know, the next 10 years. They even had some that were on clearance for 50 cents. I think they were glow in the dark, which you could use that because they're going to paint over it anyway. But I like the puffy paint because it has some dimension to it. super cheap. I used to make t-shirts with this, like iron on transfer books, and you would iron the transfer onto a t-shirt and then paint it and like outline it with the puffy paint and they all look so terrible and I was always trying to sell them. Does anybody remember those iron on transfer books? It was like a giant catalog that had a bunch of teddy bears and stuff. So this is the double one right here. It's already dried, everything's ready to go, and I am just coating it with a layer of the white chalk paint from Waverly. You can do this technique with any color of paint, but I'm trying to get a cracked porcelain look, so I went with stark white. I was tempted to do a cream, but my cream was too yellow. I have a problem with cream too. This is Distress Crackle Paint in Clear Rock Candy. I am not 100% sure they still make this. I ordered it on Amazon, but I couldn't find it in Michael's or Hobby Lobby, and I couldn't find any mention of it on their websites. If you can get this, if you see it somewhere, buy it because it's amazing. This four ounce jar was maybe $7, which it would have been probably 12 at Hobby Lobby had they had it. But the directions are for this are to apply a medium thick coat and they mean it. Just slap that on there. I'm actually not really brushing it in. I'm just kind of using the brush to slap it on. And um, yeah, don't, don't be shy with this. I'm a little shy with it because I want to I want this bottle to last as long as possible. Not that I just can't order another one off of Amazon, but every time I order something off of Amazon, just like the anticipation of waiting for it to get here kills me. So I, I don't want to have to order another one for a long time. And even though I'm putting this on very thick, this will last for a long time. And if you apply a thin coat, you will get bigger cracks. If you apply a thick coat, which is what we're doing, that's how you get the tiny cracks. Like grazing that you would see on porcelain or like ironstone. I did just scrape a bunch of that off my cutting mat. I'm putting it back in the jar where it belongs. Now get ready for this. Here's my frame. That's cute. We put some paper on it. We painted it gold. All right, whatever. We're tired of looking at this now. Put it down. Put it down. Good. What else you got? Wait. Oh. 
Okay, we got this little wood piece we kept. Oh, wait. Wait, look at it. Wait for it. The camera does not do this justice. It's amazing. This is the coolest product I've ever worked with. I first tried it like 10 years ago when it came out and I was just like mind blown. What is this? How is it working? The paint is not cracked. All that cracking is in the coat that we put on top. And I have a little clip on the side that I took with my phone in different lights so maybe you could see it better, but camera, useless at this point. There's no point in trying to show you the texture this has, the gloss it has. It's really, really good. So this, um, we're not gonna talk about it. Just don't worry, but don't look at this. Just, you know, we're just gonna go through it. Nobody needs to be worried about what's going on. Not a big deal. Let's pretend like that never happened. Oh, oh no, let's try to fix, no. Okay, don't, don't worry about that. That was nothing. But now for some reason we have two of them. The one on the right has one layer of the crackle. The one on the left that I'm showing right now has two layers. You can't see the puffy paint as much, but I like the crackle on the one with two layers better. And see at the top right there, you can kind of see how the paint separated. That separated not because of the crackle, but because I put the crackle on when the paint was not 100% dry. So I'm going to go with the thicker one because I like the way that looks. And this is just assembly at this point. See, I'm trying to decide. I know which one I'm going to use. It's going to be the thicker one that looks better. And drop it because I'm a Butterfingers. Now y'all know I'm thinking about, am I going to get this in here straight? Because that happens every time I record a video. And instead of attempting anything, I glued the back little wood piece to the back of the leaf. That way, I can get it in the box, wiggle it around if I need to, and I don't have to get it straight in like one shot. So, excuse my head. So there it is. Oh, it's a little crooked. Fix that. There we go. Push it down. that's it I really just wanted to show you guys how to use this distress crackle glaze it's it's awesome you can do so much with it and it makes anything look like tile a porcelain you can put it over paper you can put it on anything it's awesome that's it I hope you guys enjoyed this one I tried to get some good shots with my phone and mess with the saturation and the sharpness to show you how many cracks there are but this is the best I could do. Please consider liking, subscribing, commenting, following me on Instagram, all that good stuff. See you guys later. Bye.